Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, let me just a little bit. Okay, so in this week, we're going to finish um, section 1.4. Uh, 1.3 is going to be due today. We're going to finish 1.4 and 1.5. Okay, so before I introduce 1.4 and 1.5, I would like to let you know that your written assignment one, all the instructions are here. Okay, I uploaded the written assignment one here. So you can click, click written assignment one PDF, it will give you a PDF file, and you can print it out and write on your, write, uh, your solution here, and then you'll finish that. Uh, and you sorry, you scan that and upload it into Dropbox, or you can uh, open your written assignment. Your uh, here the Word document. Either one is either one will be okay. Okay, so you can print, open either one and print it out, and then write your solution. Then scan it. Will take a very clear pictures and upload it due to our Dropbox. Okay, so also uh, there is if you open your written assignment on PDF. You're going to see in the end there is a group work. There is a group discussion question. So you may want to write down your group member names here and also uh, communicate with each other. Well, you can. How do you see who are your uh, group members? You can write. You can do this. You go to. Let's, let me change it to viewer student. So if you go to um, groups. Okay, then you can see your group member here. For example, group one, you can see who is group, who are in group one. You can see who, who is in your group, and you can email them and say, "Hi, I would like you to talk with you about the discussion like that." And group two, these are your uh, um, the group numbers. Or you can just choose email all of them. I think you can choose email group one here. We email your group one, and you have all your. Uh, group numbers here. You can talk with each other. Okay, so it's very important you can talk with each other, help with each other during, uh, for the group uh, assignment. All right. So if you have any question, just feel free to let me know. Okay. Okay. So now um, let's continue work on section one point four. Section one point three is going to be due today. Is complex numbers. Uh, it's not really hard. Complex numbers. You just need to know how to simplify the complex numbers. Um, for example, multiply the conjugate of top and bottom, and uh, rationalize the denominator, or combine like terms. It's it's not really hard. Okay, so you watch the videos, you should be able to finish it um, on time today. If you have questions, you have to let me know. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, I have several students, not many. Well, could not catch up with the schedule. I see you uh, missed uh, several homeworks. Well, if you really don't have time, like for example, I'm so busy every day. Every day, Monday through Sunday, I work from eight to ten. So I don't have any time. Maybe just I have one hour. I'm taking three classes. Well, at this situation, you should drop this class or drop the other class. What what whatsoever you have to make sure you get at least you prepare three hours. Of uh, studying the book and three hours doing your homework. Some of the students probably can finish it quicker. That's just a standard hours, okay? If you don't have time, if you have, you are really busy, you should consider drop the class and or change your schedule, okay? So that's uh, that's what I want to let you know. The online class requires very good time management, okay? Um, you know where to. You know what's what you need to do if you can't keep up with the schedule. You need to click the course schedule. Say course schedule right here. Okay. You go to course content and click uh, course schedule. They actually give you all of the days every day. Like look, you can print it out. Print this page out and uh, paste this one. Cop make a uh, print it out and then paste this one. Stick this one on your study area, post in your study area. And then you can see every day, okay, today, so for example, today, today comp complex numbers. Wednesday, quadratic equation, my labs plus. This is all my labs plus work. And uh, Friday, application and modeling with quadratic equations. And every day you can see you just, once you finish it, you mark it off. Once you finish, you mark it off. And then you can, you can know 
your your class schedule. You don't you never miss anything. Well, if there's not if there there there's anything not here, will not be your part of your grade. Okay, you just need to finish all the things here, right on this um on this schedule. It's very clear, very straightforward. For example, written assignment available yesterday and it's going to be due um, September the twenty-first, due Wednesday, the week after next week. Okay, so it's week after next week would we'll do Wednesday. So you can see each due day, each day you have the specific work you need to finish. You need to uh, finish. So just keep up with the schedule. Well, our schedule is very flexible. Um, you can you can do it on eight o'clock a.m. You can do it in the evening before you go to sleep. Anyway, you have to finish your work on time. Okay. Well, let's look at the uh, problem assignment four. And this is a quadratic equation. Okay, so quadratic equation. First, I would like to give you a little bit um introduction on quadratic equation. What is the quadratic equation? Quadratic equation is you have a equation like second degree of the square. Okay, second power square. For example, a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero. This is a standard form of quadratic equation. Let me turn off the light. This is a standard form of a quadratic equation. And also we need to require that a not equal zero. You may ask me a question. So what if a equals zero? If a equals zero, then this is just the first linear equation. It's not a quadratic equation anymore, okay? Um, so you may have sometimes b equals zero, that's fine. For example, if you have 3x squared plus 6 equals zero, this is a quadratic equation. Even when you don't have the second term in middle is zero, or sometimes you just have 3x squared plus 5x, you don't have c equals zero. This is a quadratic equation, quadratic equation. You have the quad quadratic form here. And also sometimes you may have 3x squared plus 5x equals 3x plus 2. Well, this is a quadratic equation because the, as long as the sec a quadratic form uh, square, the coefficient is not zero, it's a quadratic equation, okay? And uh, well, you can see what's the difference between this one and this one is that right-hand side is not zero. Okay, before you solve a quadratic equation, before you solve the quadratic equation, you always want to make sure the right hand side is zero. Okay, so 3x squared plus 5x minus 3x minus 2 equals zero, you will have a 3x squared plus 2x minus 2 equals zero. Then you have a standard form of quadratic equation. Okay, oh, I should say that you shouldn't, you can, you do not always have to do that. But before you are very familiar with the quadratic equation, it, it's better to do this way and use quadratic formula. Okay, so after you read the textbook, you probably know the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, this is a quadratic formula. You must memorize. Okay, if there is something you need to put on your formula card for the exam one, this should be the uh, one for sure. Okay, there are probably other things. This should be one for sure if you don't memorize the quadratic. If you don't memorize it, well, there are a lot of equations in different all kinds of forms. It doesn't matter whatever form it is. Okay, as long as you put the equation like this way, then you can use the formula. Okay, for example. Let's just look at the simple one. For example, uh, first one, you can see. I probably will not explain all of them. Just let's, uh, pick several problems, and uh, you use the formula to to finish that. Okay. Again, this formula is really important. You have to make sure you memorize it. 
Um, in the future classes, if you have more math classes, for example, calculus, well, you have to memorize all of these formulas. Okay, so even, for example, x squared equals 70, even you have x squared plus, um, what is that? 73, right? I just do, you know, use another one. 23 equals 0. If I have this one. Well, this is one way you can solve that. You can see probably you can do if x squared equals, subtract both sides by 23, so it's negative 23, and then x equals uh, positive and negative square root of negative 23. Uh, so in the previous class, we have a, uh, said that square root of a negative number is complex number, so the answer is just a positive and negative square root of 23i. Okay. This is, if you are familiar with the quadratic equation, you can solve this way. Some students probably say, oh, I don't really know you can do that. But it's okay. You still can use the formula. As I said, this formula solves all quadratic equations, even this one. All quadratic, 20 questions of them, you can use this formula. Although sometimes you use the formula, it's, more, it's very time consuming sometimes if you know easy ways to do that for or factor. If you don't know how to do that, you can use the formula for sure. So if you use this formula, how to do this? This is the first way, okay? If you use the formula, you see x squared plus 23 equals 0. So from here, a equals 1, b equals 0, c equals 23, right? For this one, a equals 1, there's no b, b equals 0, c equals 23. And then plug into the formula, so x equals 2 times a, so 2 times 1. And negative b, so b is 0, so it's just 0. Plus or minus square root of b squared, b squared, so 0 squared, so 0, minus 4 times a times c. a is 1, 4 times 1, times c is 23. So the answer is x equals 2, positive and negative. 0 plus is goes away, 0 plus or minus square root of negative 4 times 23. Well, negative 4, you can, can, four you can um, square root of 4 is 2, you know that. So it's going to be x equals 2, well, I should choose a better place on that side. Plus or minus 2 square root of 23i, because negative 4, you can take it out as 2i, and 2 cancel out, you are going to have exactly the same thing. Okay, if you use the formula, you get exactly the same thing of square root of 23i. So the question here is positive negative square root of 73i, you know that, okay? So you can always use the quadratic formula for any quadratic formula, okay? So a kind of quadratic equation. Let's look at another one of your homework. Okay. So you can use quadratic formula for that one. You can use quadratic formula for that one, but you don't have to. You can take just positive squ negative square root of square root of negative one twenty five, and you have to simplify one twenty five into five square multiplied by five and factor it out. Okay, this one. V square minus seven V plus twelve equals zero. It says solve the equation by zero factor properly. I'll give you another example, not this one. Okay. So you can do, for example, x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. You can factor it. If you uh, remember that factoring, you can factor it cross multiply. Factor the first one as x times x. Factor the last one as negative 3 and a positive 1. Cross multiply, negative 3, check here, negative 3x plus 1x equals negative 2x, which is a middle term, and that's right. Then my factoring is going to be, this is my first factor, this is my second factor. So it's going to be x minus 3, x plus 1 equals 0. And here I got x equals positive 3. Well, I forgot to say something about that. So here you can set up x minus 3 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0. Zero fact, if this is 0, the equation is true. If this is 0, the equation is true. So x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. Okay, 
So this is solving by, by factoring it. Oh, sometimes you say, oh, Professor, I forgot that I don't know how to factor this. Just, uh, I just don't have that um, feeling to factor this. I don't know how to factor. It's fine. You can use the quadratic formula. What I said, you can always use the, you can use the quadratic formula to solve any quadratic equation, okay, in this form. Uh, x squared, any quadratic form, if it's not this form, you change that into this form. So x equals, so here you got a equals 1, b equals negative 2, c equals negative 3 for this one. Okay, use the formula. X equals two times a is two times one. Negative b, so it's negative b is negative two. Continue again, plus or minus square root of b squared is negative two squared minus four times a. A is one. C is negative three. And you simplify that. So x equals two positive 2 plus or minus 4 minus 4 12 plus negative 12, 4 plus 12 which is square root of 16 which is 4 okay square root of 16 is 4 and then you simplify that 2 plus 4 equals 6 over 2 3 2 minus 4 negative 2 over 2 negative 1 you see you have exactly the same answer as I have here factoring so even you don't know how to use the factor. If you don't know, forget how to factor it. Sometimes it's not easy to factor it. And you still can use the quadratic formula as well. You can use you can factor that one or you can use you can use the quadratic formula. Okay, so this is a little bit different. It says find all solutions by factoring. Well if, if it says by factoring, for sure you can factor it. But if you forgot factoring it, you can do a quadratic formula. Okay, that is a little bit different for this one. Because the equation is not a standard form. What you need to do, you need to change that equation to standard form first. So 3r squared minus 22r equals 16. Okay. So now you have your uh, quadratic equation is like this. Is it a standard form? No, the standard form is like this. The right equation has to be zero. So you have to subtract both sides from 16 and make sure the right hand side is zero. So you got 3r squared minus 22r minus 16 equals zero. Now you can use the formula. a equals 3, b equals negative 22, c equals 16, negative 16. Okay, so you can use a equals 3, b equals negative 22, c equals negative 16, plug into the formula and use a calculator and find a solution. Or, or factor is much easier sometimes. So you can do factor first one, r times r. 3 r times r give you r, 3 r squared. Factor last one, negative 8 and 2, positive 2. Okay. So positive 2 times negative 8 give you negative 16. Cross multiply, 3r times negative 8 is negative 24. 2 times r is plus 2r, which is negative 22r. Well, this is the middle one, which means that my factoring is right. Sometimes you have to try it, try another one. Like if it's not working, if it's not negative 22, you cross multiply, add them together. If it's not negative 22, you have to check it, you try another different uh, combination. Then you have this right. So my factor is 3r plus 2r minus 8 equals 0. From here I can solve 3r plus 2 equals 0, so r equals negative 2 over 3. So r minus 8 equals 0, so r equals 8. Okay, this is how you solve this equation. Again, if you don't know how to use the, the uh, factoring method, you can use the formula. Okay, once you change it into standard form, you can always use the formula to solve any quadratic equation. You can use a square root, we can fact x plus 6, x minus 6, or you can use quadratic formula. Either way, you can find that easily. You can you can fact it, it's a complete is a complete square, 4x minus 1 square, x equals 1 fourth. Or you can use quadratic formula, or you can fact it. Okay, so you can say this one. Is write a square form, so a square equals a number. Well, any anytime you have a complete square, just take a square root and you solve it. Okay, so 
anytime you have a square root, for example, if if you have something, for example, x squared equals 16, you can you use a formula? Yes. It, it probably more time consuming. But as long as it's complete square, you just want to get rid of a square root. Take both sides, square root. And if a square goes away, but this one has a square root. Remember, it's square formula. It's a, a quadratic formula. I always have two roots. So it's plus or minus 16. Okay. Well, if it's not this one, you can change another one. For example, x plus 1 squared equals negative 5. Is this square, perfect square? There's a constant number here. You still can do that. x plus 1 equals, take a, take, get rid of the square, uh, square by square root, plus or minus square root of negative 5. Square root of negative 5 is not a problem at all now, because we just uh, learned that quite complex numbers. So it's plus or minus square root of 5i. And then x subtracted 1 from both sides is negative 1. Subtracted 1 from both sides is negative 1. You can shift to positive 1 to the other side is negative 1. So it's equal sign here. You put it on the right hand side of the equal sign is negative 1. Or you subtract 1 here, subtract 1 here, it's the same idea. So it's negative 1 plus or minus square root of 5i. Okay. If it's a, a square form, you can do this way. You can also do quadratic formula way, but it's going more it's more time consuming. You still can make it right, but it's more time consuming. Okay. Okay, so even it says by completing the square, you do not really need to complete the square, but you can use factoring, you can use quadratic formula, as long as you can solve it out, that's okay. I'm not that picky. When you do your test, it says completing by square. Well, you can see, oh, as long as you get the right answer, the test you really don't, don't know how to do that, right? So now, but I still want to show you how to do the completing square form. For example, x squared plus 6x minus 7 equals 0. You know you can factor it. You know you can use a quadratic formula. Now I need to introduce a completing square form. How do you do that? So you can do x squared plus 6x. You need a complete square. You need a square, so you have to add something and then minus, add something here to make a complete square. So this is x squared, this is 6x. If the first coefficient is 1, so the middle one divided by 2, then square. So it's going to be 3 squared. Once you plus the 3 squared, you have 2 minus 3 squared. You don't want to change anything. Compare with this one. Compare with this equation, you add 3 squared because the middle is the number is 6. Okay. After plus 3 squared, you have to subtract 3 squared because you don't want to change the whole equation. This part actually is zero. I didn't change the equation. I just add something plus minus something. It's still zero here. So it's still the previous equation. However, I can use this three as a complete square form. So basically, I will have x plus three square, and then this two will be num will be a number. It's minus sixteen equals zero, and then you can do x plus three square equals sixteen, and then you take a square root on both sides. So x plus 3 equals plus or minus square root of 16. So x plus 3 equals plus or minus 4. And then x, you subtract 3 from both sides. So x equals 1. 4 minus 3 equals 1. And negative 4 minus 3 equals negative 7. OK. So that's how you do it by completing square. You can do fact it. You can do use quadratic formula. A equals 1, B equals 6, C equals negative 7. You can use that to solve that as well. OK. So solve by completing square. You can use completing square, quadratic formula. Uh, sometimes you cannot factor it if, it's not a, uh, if the determinant is not a square. OK. So you can solve that by either method is OK. Okay. Um, solve the equation with quadratic formula. It's not a standard form. You have to change that in your standard form. For example, x squared equals 2x minus 26. It's not a good standard form. You have to change that. So x squared, shift that all, everything on the right to the left. Change the sign. So plus, plus 2x, 
to the other side, so it's negative 2x. Minus 26 to the left side, it's plus 26, and equals 0. Now from here to here, now this is a standard form. You have A, you have B, you have C. You can use a form. You can use a formula, sorry. OK. Uh, this is a little bit different. You have to multiply everything by 21 because you have a, a rational equation, right? Uh, 21 times 7, 21 times 21, get rid of 21, 21 times 1 is negative 21. So basically, you don't want any uh, denominator here. So denominator is a real big problem. But if you multiply every single term, multiply 21 here, 21 here, 21 here, uh, 21 multiplied by 0 is, 20 is 0. So you, you don't have any, um, you don't have any uh, uh, denominator anymore. Okay. Just example. If I have 5, 1, 5 x squared minus 1 over 10 x plus minus 1 equals 0. For example, this one, not that one. Uh, so you multiply everything by 10, you got 2 x squared. You multiply this by 10, 10 cancel out, just minus x. Multiply this one, 10 is just minus 10. So then you have ABC, use a quadruple formula again. Plug in. Okay, so number 16. Okay, so this one you is not a is not a standard form for sure, and is this one is not a polynomial function. You need to FOIL it out. Okay, you need to FOIL it out. Uh, just take this one as example. X minus four, x minus eight equals negative four. X minus four, x minus eight equals negative four. It is a quadratic equation because we have square, but it's not a standard form. I need to change this into standard form. So uh, first, uh, there is a negative four on the right hand side. I don't want that. Well, I need to shift that to that left side. Well, then there is a quadratic equation here. It's not a polynomial form. We're not adding together. It's multiplication of two factors. So I need to multiply them out. For your it front x square out. out minus 8x, inside minus 4x, last plus 32, and equals negative 4. Then I can shift the left to 4 in the left side. So it's x squared minus 8 minus 4 minus 12x, plus 32, plus negative 4 is left to side is positive 4. So I have x squared minus 12x minus plus 36 equals 0. You can use the quadratic formula, but I can do it easier way because this is a completely square, so you can factor it out as x minus 6, x minus 6 equals 0, and x equals 6. Normally, for both of them, it's x equals 6. Normally, for a quadratic equation, you want to try factoring it first because factoring is much quicker okay, uh, than the formula. Formula is, uh, it requires very careful ca calculation, but it is very um, is sometimes you don't know how to factor, you have to use the quadratic formula, so it's 6. Okay. Okay, so this f equals f equals a m v square over r. Uh, I want to do not exactly the same one, but I want to do a different one. Then you have an idea how you solve this one as well. Okay. For example, you have an equation like x s equals 3x, well, just not x, 3r square s, no, u, v, okay? So what you need to do, you want to solve, is that if suppose it says solve for r. As I said, whatever you want to solve, in the previous class I told you, if you want to solve for r, you want to isolate r. So there's a bunch of things here besides r. So what I need to do, I need to get rid of them one, one by one. So first there's a v here, it's a denominator. If it's a denominator, so I have to multiply both sides by v. So I got sv equals 3r squared u. Now I have 3 as a coefficient multiplication. I have a u as a multiplication. So I just need to divide both sides by 3, divide both sides by u, then r squared is isolated. So you got sv divided by 3, 
divided by u, then r square will be isolated. Okay. Then once you isolate r square, you want to solve for r, you just get rid of the square. Okay. How do I get rid of a square? You just take a square root. So basically you're going to have r, you take a square root of r, square is r. Take a square root of this is square root of sv over 3u. Remember, this is a square. Okay. You, when you take a square root, you have positive and negative, you have two roots. Okay. That's how you solve this one. Um, okay, this discriminant. Use discriminant to find out what kind of solution you have. Basically, you have, you look at this formula, look at the quadratic formula, look at the quadratic formula. The problem is that sometimes the square root b squared minus 4ac in, in under the formula, under square root right here, under the square root, b squared minus 4ac, okay? This is a problem. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's zero. Okay? If this is positive, you're going to have two real roots. If it's zero, and the plus or minus zero, this whole part is gone, it's just one root. If it's negative, you know square root of negative is what? Complex numbers. So this one is going to be a complex number. So now, what is discriminant for our equation? If it's not standard form, you have to change that into standard form. Then you'll use the discriminant to determine it. D discri uh, discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Okay? b squared minus 4ac. If it's positive, two real roots. If it's equal to 0, one real root. Or or two same rules, or it's one rational rules, right? It's two same, well one is exactly the same meaning, but some people just, some problems say different way, okay? So one real rules or two same rules, negative, okay, a pair of conjugate complex. Um, let me see. Uh, it just say two, real, two complex rules, that's enough. Uh, but it is a, com a pair of conjugate because it's a plus or minus, okay, a pair of conjugate uh, complex rules. Or you just say two complex rules, that will be enough. Okay, now let's just look at example, this one. 6, 8x squared plus 5x equals 8. 8x squared plus 5x equals 8. Is, this, is it a standard form? No, it's not. So I need to change that into standard form. So basically, I'll move everything to the left side. F5. This is here is already on the left side of equal sign. Don't change that. But an 8 is on the right hand side of the equal sign. So I've changed, shifted that to the left side of the equal sign. So shift that is minus 8 equals 0. Now, A, B, C is given. Use that formula. Discriminant. Okay. If that's stuck in a thing you want right on your formula sheet, plug this one. Okay, so then you have, uh, sorry, a equals eight, b equals five, c equals negative eight. Okay. So now we use the discriminant, d delta equals b square minus four ac. Okay. B square is twenty five. Plug in minus four times eight times negative eight. You use your calculator. You can find this is 25 minus, minus minus is plus, 32 times 256. Okay, you can obviously tell this is positive. You got a positive number, positive number is positive. And it has two real roots, or two rational roots. Okay, two rational solutions. Wait, wait. Two rational, one rational, two non-real complex solutions, two irrational, sorry, my bad, my bad, two irrational roots. Oh, it actually says that. Well, you can tell, what's the difference between irrational or rational? Irrational means if you take a square root, you got 25 plus 256, this actually equals 281, 
281. Yeah, 281. Okay. 281 is positive, it's two real roots. But 281 is not a square form. You take a square root on this one, it's going to have a lot of decimals. It's can have it's irrational number. It's not a perfect square. If the delta, if this is not perfect square, you're gonna have a square root, for example, square of, square root of five. It's not a perfect square, so it's going to be irrational. Okay. If you have a square root of nine, it's a perfect square, which is three. Well, this is a rational number, so that's what it means. Okay. Wait. Ah, uh, yeah, two ir irrational roots. Okay. Oh, I have not said anything like that. I have to put it here. Right, let me say it again. So if you check check that 281 is not a square, if it's not a perfect square, if it's not a perfect square, then it's a uh, then it's a irrational number. Because you take a square root, okay? I say again. Square root of five is a irrational root because this one is not a perfect square. Square root of nine, this is a rational number because it's going to be a integer three. Okay. So that's the and the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. That's it. Okay, so use the discriminant to do that, and uh, I think you should have should not have any problem to do that one. Find a disc discriminant, and then if it's positive, if it's equal to zero, if it's negative, so use that rule to determine it to make the decision for the roots. Okay, now we're done with this section.